It's tough to review stories like A Contract of God than True Stories for the God. Because typically I weigh the positives and the negatives. While neither of these stories are perfect, there's nothing inherently bad about either of them. Any issue you would have with the stories would have to do with your own particular preference. When I started Graphic Description and its YouTube channel, the idea was to shine a light on smaller and more obscure titles and creations. Also to take a look at known characters and creators, but also stories that they've been in or created that may have slipped your notice. I feel A Contract with God and True Stories for the God fall under that category. My original plan was to review these at the start of 2014. Oh well, better late than never. A Contract of God was written and drawn by comic book legend Will Eisner. It's the first part of a trilogy of books, followed by A Life Force, and then Drops the Avenue. A Contract with God has been considered by many the world's first graphic novel. It's not, but that's a discussion for another time. It is a semi-biography of Will Eisner growing up in the 1930s. Per the preface he wrote in the book, he wants us to feel that the story is real while names and faces are rearranged. One thing you will notice in this novel is the lack of hard panels. There are black borders, but depending on the story, they aren't always an abundance of them. This gives the novel a storybook type of feel. Another thing you will notice is the pictures on each page. There are a plethora of splash pages. The number of the panels on each page can vary from 1 to 5. It's in a constant flux. One last thing is there isn't a single story thread that links all of the stories in this graphic novel. This is an anthology, and other than the fact that they start and maybe they end on the fictional Dropsy Avenue in the Bronx, they're all completely different. That said, I will also try to be as spoiler-free as I can. We begin the Taylor story of the book with Freemy Hirsch, as he sucks through the rain after experiencing one of the worst pains a husband can. When he gets home, he finally breaks down and yells to the heavens and creates a contract with God. And he expects God to stick to his end of the bargain. After that, there are several twists and turns, and he later experiences the worst tragedy that a parent can experience. Feeling that God betrayed him, he tosses the contract and changes his way of life. I won't say how it ends, but I will say... One, it kind of ends how it began, and two, there is a certain tone that starts in this story that bleeds throughout the rest of the novel. In the next story, The Street Singer, this story looks at a day in the life of a street singer named Eddie. Per the book during the Great Depression, people would go and pop up in various alleys and sing for whatever change that you would toss down to them. Eddie is a drunk a philanderer, and physically abusive. He's also a very delusional dreamer. The story focuses mostly on three characters, Eddie, his wife, and Diva Mara Maria, a former singer, and perhaps Eddie's way out. Every main character in this story is broken in some way. Once again, as with the previous story, this story basically ends how it began. Next. The Super. This story has two main characters. The first is a German immigrant named Mr. Skuggs, who is the superintendent to the Dropsy Avenue tenement. He is a gruff, unpleasant, unlikable grump of a human being, and he hates his tenants, Jews, and perhaps America as well. He is also lonely, having only his job, his dog, and um, let's just say his hobby. The other player is Rosie, a 10-year-old niece of one of the tenants. Just with her first appearance, you know something isn't right about her. Neither of these two people are good, and about midway through the story, it starts to get dark, and it ends very 
nihilistic and dark at the end as well. And the final one, Kukulin. This last story is the longest and perhaps the most ambitious because of the sheer amount of character. The page count and all the storylines going on also makes it probably the most ambitious of all the stories. Kukulin, per the novel, is a hotel in Upper New York. People stay there when they go on vacation. They will give you a place to sleep, but you'll have to work there as well, cook, clean, etc. It's a place where the lower middle class family would go. Some of the events happening is a possible love triangle between a hardworking gal named Goldie and a couple guys named Benny and Herbie. The erosion of a marriage. Three kids having their, let's say, first time. More physical and sexual abuse. It looks like with this story, Will Eisner wanted to end on a big note. Before I finish up, I'd like to discuss the art. The art is good. It's definitely an improvement in my opinion from when he was younger. It looks better than his work when he used to work on the spirit. It's expressive and cartoony, but it's done in a realistic way, if that makes any sense. The question here is, do I recommend this? I'm not sure if I how I could recommend this novel. For historical purposes as one of the first modern graphic novels, yes, it should be recognized. But this is a very hard book to get through. There's hardly any likable characters. While you can understand the character's plight, you, for the most part, you really don't want to see them succeed. Also, this book can be very punishing. With the exception of maybe one character, there aren't any happy endings in this novel. That being said, I would say this is the type of book that you should read for historical purposes, but odds are you're only going to read it once. And until next time, goodbye.